Right, good morning everyone and welcome to the first session in Professional Beauty Group's new Upskill series. I'm Eve Oxbury, I'm Head of Editorial for the beauty side of the Professional Beauty Group. Um, but Upskills is an initiative across the hair side as well and today we are live on Professional Beauty, Hairdressers Journal International, Aesthetic Medicine, Modern Barber and PBHJ Island. Um, the idea behind Upskills is to support the industry during the current lockdowns with daily doses of information and, and ideas to help kind of grow your business and really to kind of learn while you can't work in your business to work on your business. Um, our live session today is the first of a three part digital skills series with Kate Woods um, and today's session is a salon owner's guide to building an online store. So yes, today I'm joined by Kate Woods, who runs um, two companies actually, Core Digital and Salon Dipity. And uh, Kate's a total expert in websites. Hi Kate, thanks for joining. Hello, good to speak to you. So Kate, yeah, I was just, as I was introducing you, saying obviously you have two companies. Do you want to just explain a little bit about who you are and, and what your companies do? First? Yeah, of course. So um, I launched Core Digital in 2013. I'd, uh, I've been the web editor at H Day for, um, seven years and after having children I decided to go out on my own and at the time when I launched Core Digital I had in my head and I'm going to give people the skills so that they can do it themselves uh, and actually I quickly realised that that wasn't what people wanted at that time so Core Digital is all about done for you marketing and I always say it's modern marketing with old-fashioned values um, and my clients I still have clients now that I had from day one because it's all about building relationships because for me that's the most important thing of any uh, sort of marketing type of service. Um, and then actually in 2019, I was a bit like, actually, there is no appetite for people to learn how to do it themselves. I think because social media had changed things so much. So, so I had this idea of brilliant, I'm going to create Salon Liberty. Uh, and I had this brilliant idea. And if I'd been, been on it and got ready, I would have been in the best possible position in March last year. And it turns <laughs> out um, that the market became very much in need of these resources. And I wasn't quite as ready to give them them as I, as I would have liked to have been but right now I've got a growing bank of resources that's growing all the time and, and most of it is about free resources that you can use for yourself although what I have learned is some people do like a little bit more hand holding so uh, there's going to be a growing bank of courses as well if that's what people want to do. Excellent fabulous well yeah as you say I think digital skills are kind of more needed than ever in the um, in the salon and clinic market so it'd be great to Kind of discuss that and I know the first part is about um, online retail which I think a lot of salons and, and clinics and, and barbers have started to do and um, some have made a great success of it during lockdown some are just kind of testing the water and thinking about it and um, as things have gone on a little bit longer than expected with Covid probably and um, so yeah I think um, you're going to kind of demo a bit aren't you about how these things work and um, if people have questions as they go along, we will have a bit of time for questions at the end. So if you're watching in Zoom with us, then just type your questions um, either into the chat or the Q&A box, which you should be able to see a little Q&A at the bottom of your screen. If you're watching on one of our Facebook channels, just type them in the chat there and they will get through to us. And yeah, there'll definitely be some time for, for your questions after Kate has explained. Okay, so let's move on over to PowerPoint. I'm just going to turn my camera off for this bit so I don't cover the screen and so people can see you and focus on you but I will I'll be here and I'll turn my video back on in a bit. Okay um, I was just saying to Eve before we began when, when you present to people it's all about like making eye contact and smiling so um, I'm just going to imagine you're there smiling back at me so um, so thank you for, for joining me today. So um, in this presentation, I'm gonna predominantly, I'm gonna be talking about some different options for you if you do want to build a, a store yourself and exactly how you can do that. Uh, later on, I'll show you some elements of Shopify so you can get a feel for actually, could I do this for myself? Um, so let's kick start. Should you build an online store? Um, I think at the moment, um, there's lots, um, at the moment, there are lots of reasons why it's a really good idea to build an online store. Um, most notably that it's a source of income during lockdown, um, that it's a potential revenue stream, stream in the case of future closures. Um, and I think that's really important because one thing that you've learned having gone back 
is it's quite easy to find yourself in a situation where you've come into contact with someone with COVID and therefore you find your doors shut and your competitive stores open. And in some ways that's almost worse. So it's important to have that revenue stream there as well. Uh, it makes it really easy to, for clients to buy their favorite products once they've bought once, their products are saved to their account. Um, so therefore it makes it really easy and it makes it easy for you to make recommendations for them. Um, it gives you a call to action for your social tutorials. So many of you are doing so much great stuff at the moment, whether that be hair tutorials, whether it's nail tutorials, talking people through um, looks that they can create at home. But there's, other than kind of engagement and building a relationship, there's not an end goal for you. This gives you an opportunity to say, okay, so these are the products that I've used. Um, and, and it gives you uh, that call to action uh, and that uh, potential for sales, for making sales. Um, and this is a really important one. It creates a revenue stream outside your existing client base. Um, I think at the moment, sometimes it feels like you're always pulling on that same bank of people your clients um, bought for money um, and for support. And, um, and it's this is a, a, an online store is a real opportunity to reach a, a bigger a breadth of people. Um, interestingly enough, one of my clients that I'll show you something of a bit later, they were quite adamant they wanted their store to be click and collect only. But actually, they bought in the biggest amounts of money from people that they've never had contact with before. Um, so there really is an opportunity to extend outside of your client base. Now, I don't think I would be doing my job properly if I didn't if I told you it was all positive and it's brilliant and you should definitely go off and do this because that's not the case. For some people, this isn't the right thing to do. And I would certainly, if, if your retail isn't, doesn't work well for you um, when, you're, uh, when your salon or your clinic is open, then perhaps this isn't the right thing for you to do. Uh, it's certainly something that is, is easier if you have a, a wider audience that you can speak to. So a big mailing list and a big social media following. Um, but the cons are that it does take work to set up. Um, I genuinely believe that you can have a shop set up in less than a week, but you are still gonna have to sit down and actually do the hard work. It's another thing for you to manage. And, and right now, while we're in lockdown and you've got time, you might be like, oh yeah, but that doesn't really matter. I, you know, I've got time, that'll be fine. But actually it's things like stock management it, and, and making sure that your products are up to date, making sure that you add new products and, and what have you. So you do, uh, and making sure that you, you whether it's taking them to the post box or delivering them or whatever, it, you've got to factor in that that is another job that you will need to do. Uh, you'll need to have a delivery mechanism. And at the moment, that might be that it's delivery. But as I say, you do need to be aware that that is time and money um, as an investment. Um, it, it's something else that you are going to need to add to your marketing plan. Um, if you don't have adequate marketing channels, you're going to find it really hard to make any money out of the shop. Uh, and most of the platforms that you might want to use have costs attached. Now they're minimal costs and actually we'll look at those on the next screen. Um, but actually, as you, if, you, if you get more complicated, then those costs go up. And also most of the payment mechanisms have costs attached. Um, so that's something for you to think about. Um, and I just also want to mention that actually, um, it takes time to start to bring in revenue from a shop. It, it, you'd like to think of it as an, if you build it, they will come. But actually, um, WooCommerce have a stat that it takes 31 days to get your first sale on average. So if you are doing it as a quick fix solution, then you're probably gonna be disappointed. So what platforms can you use if you've decided, yes, I know that this is the right thing for me, I want to do this. Okay, so you've got some options. If your website is built in Wix or Squarespace, they both have platforms that um, have attached to it that you can use. I'm not gonna be talking about those at all during this presentation because they're not things that I am an expert in. Um, Shopwired is an equivalent to Shopify um, that is becoming really, really, really popular in the UK. Um, but again, I tend to, most of the sites that I work with um, are WordPress sites. That's my preferred platform for websites. Um, and therefore, generally speaking, I use WooCommerce. However, WooCommerce can be a little bit challenging if you're doing it yourself because um, it's different depending on the version of WordPress you have and 
what have you. So most of what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about Shopify. Um, the thing about Shopify is it's really, really simple to create a standalone store. Um, and then it can be integrated to your site, as I'll show you on the next um, couple of screens. Um, I just want to mention that there is another option for you in terms of building your store these days. Uh, and I've noticed that a number of the uh, online booking systems have started to add stores. Uh, I'm not going to diss them or praise them because I genuinely haven't had an opportunity to try them. Um, a couple of my clients have had difficulties with support with it. And um, one thing I would say is sometimes it's quite difficult if you're adding another attachment and another and attachment, and another attachment to the same the same platform uh, it's very difficult to unpick if something changes down the line and actually you decide it's not for you anymore so that is something i would consider before going down that road but as i say i'm sure a lot of what the the, the um the re, uh, the um online booking platforms do is absolutely brilliant so i'm sure it is fantastic okay so i just wanted to show you a couple of sites uh, to give you a little bit of a feel for um whether you'd have it integrated or whether you'd have it on your site, on the side. So as I said, I tend to work predominantly with WooCommerce because most of the sites that my clients have are WordPress sites. Um, and WooCommerce is a, web, a free WordPress plugin um, that um, you, you just add it to, to, your, to your site and then you start to build um, and then you can add it to your menu and it will look the same as your site and will fit in to the structure of your site. Alternatively, you might decide you want to use Shopify. Now, uh, Shopify, as I've said, is, is a favorite of, of mine for if someone wants a standalone store or if you want to get your store set up really, really quickly. I genuinely believe you could have a, a Shopify store set up by the end of the day tomorrow and be relatively pleased with it. Um, the reason I've got this, um, the Neil McLean site up there is just to say that Shopify can integrate with WordPress. So there are WordPress plugins that you can use so that uh, Shopify um, integrates in the same way that uh, WooCommerce does. So, um, so you can make it look exactly like it is part of your website. Okay, so you've decided you wanna get cracking. What next? Now, before you begin, I would always recommend you gather together all of your admin stuff because you are gonna need it to build the store. Um, and I've got the list here of, um, of the things that you're gonna need. Um, at the end, I'll give you a link to a download and that download does um, list this lot out for you. Um, but just to say that you will need this information. So it's gonna make your life much easier if you grab it in advance because you're gonna need to enter into the settings as soon as you start to build. So we're ready to go, we've got our admin, we're now thinking, okay, what do I do? The first thing I would say is when it comes to planning your store, think like a customer. And this is a real biggie for you guys because, because you are professionals and because you know your industry so well and you know the product so well and you know um, what's in them and why it's important that that's in them, it can be really easy to kind of just assume that people know those things. They don't. When I say think like a customer, I think that's all about focusing on the benefits. It's focusing on the end result. And it's also more importantly, it's about dividing the store into categories that feel logical to your customers. Um, and what I would say, if you're like, well, how do I do that? Then you must have a bank of like customers that you have a good relationship with that you can say, look, I'm thinking of doing it this way. Does this make sense to you? Um, I am always a big fan of running things past people before you do them because your, your ideal clients, they're the ones that know and, that, and actually they know it better than you. Um, so, so, uh, so make sure you think like a customer when you're preparing your categories and where you're going to put your products and things like that. Um, in terms of the categories, for me personally, I think it's always a good idea to have categories that are by brand. Um, because it makes it easy to search. But then I equally think it's important that you also have categories um, that are um, the end result. So um, I'm likely to search if I if I'm looking for if I'm looking for a um, a skincare a day cream, 
then actually it's much easier for me if I, there's a moisturiser section. So make it clear and obvious um, where people find things, because as soon as you have to start to look around, people give up and you lose them. OK, so the next thing, thinking about how you can stand out for the big retailers, I think this is really important because one thing that we all know is that you've got look fantastic. You've got all beauty and they're selling products that you sell and they're often selling those products at prices that are cheaper or at least as cheap as you can do. And that's frustrating. So what you need to do is find a way that you can stand out from them. Now, for me, the way that that's a really obvious way that you can stand out from them, and that's your knowledge. So rather than just grabbing uh, the what it says on the back of the products for your descriptions or um, or asking your manufacturers to send their product descriptions, I would think about writing descriptions that are how you would describe the products to your clients. And actually, if there's a product that is one of your team members' favourite product, say that. Um, so it's about make. So I, I, I think for me, I think this is an extension of your business. So make sure that your store looks and feels like an extension of your business and showcases your knowledge as well. Um, and then you're going to need to prepare your products and descriptions. We've just your photos and descriptions. We've just spoken a little bit about the descriptions, um, but I just want to talk to you about products, uh, the photos, because you've got two options for that. Either you can go professional. Um, and you can speak to your product manufacturers or you can do them yourself. And if you're someone that's got really good Instagram following and you're great at flat lays, do them yourself. Because again, it's an extension of your brand. Um, if you're not so much, then go for the other route. But please, 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 whatever you do, don't think, oh, it's all right, I'll just grab them off the internet and hit save. Because yes, you can do that, but it's not legal. So um, you don't want that coming back to haunt you somewhere down the line and your store that was supposed to make you money suddenly costing you money. So uh, that's a biggie for you to think about. The other thing with photos is before you begin, I want you to have a vision in your head of what do I want this to look like? And then you need to make it uniform. So whether that's that you'd like your photos to be square, Instagram style, or whether you'd like them all to be landscape or whether you'd like them to be portrait, but just make sure that you're consistent because um, consistency gives professionalism and professionalism builds trust and trust makes people buy. So I think it's really important to make sure that you've got that, that professional vision in your head. Um, research your delivery options and set your pricing. Um, probably whenever I speak to people for clients about shops, the first thing they say is, oh, what do I, how much do I charge? Um, and that's really important for you to look into that with your, uh, with your post, look into the, with the post, depending on the weights of what you're gonna be sending out there. Um, from what I've learned is that a price point of $3.95 or $4.95 usually works. But delivery options might not need to be sending it out. As I said, I've got a client who made the decision that they'd like it to be click and collect. So predominantly it is click and collect. Although, as I said, they do every now and then get this email that says, oh, I just ordered from your store and I've just realized it's click and collect. Actually, then they can charge, they can either refund or they can charge premium delivery on the, on the top. And actually what they found is that they've been able to do that. So that's fantastic. Um, in terms of delivery, um, you, I'm a fan of putting delivery rates on because they're always something you can take off in a sale. Um, but what I have noticed is that uh, you can have big success if you sell higher, higher value or over a hundred pounds offers free delivery. Um, and it's, that's a great way to push up the order of value. Um, so that's something for you to think about. OK, so you've thought all this through. You've kind of been writing your descriptions. You know how much you're going to charge. You put your tax rates on there. Now, the way I would do it next is I would prepare a spreadsheet of the content. Um, I already mentioned that there's a, a freebie at the end. And if you sign up for that freebie, I'll send you out the spreadsheet that you would need for WooCommerce or for Shopify with some kind of instructions talking you through how to do it. Um, the reason that I like to work with a spreadsheet is one, because it suits me, because it's, it's methodical and I know I've got everything. But secondly, because if you upload it, if you create a spreadsheet, you can then just simply upload it to import all of your content into your shopping platform all in one go. Um, and if you've got lots of products, then that's going to be much better than doing them one at a time. 
if you're only looking to launch with 10 or so products, doing them manually and doing them one at a time isn't going to be a problem. But, um, but for me, I, I like the organisation that preparing a spreadsheet gives you. OK, so something to know about your store when you set up and when you set it up, you are going to need to have a payment mechanism attached to it. Um, now, we've all heard of PayPal. Personally, I would be reluctant to use PayPal. I think it, it doesn't really want small businesses, to be honest. It prices itself out for small businesses and it much prefers to work with bigger businesses. Um, so I would always use Stripe over that. Something to know about Shopify is that it has Shopify Pay built in with it and they charge you what they charge you um, and you have no choice so you could there's no point in using stripe and shopify pay because you're going to be paying double so if you do decide to go down the shopify route then um, you need to use shopify pay um, but the good thing about both stripe and shopify pay is they, they they hook up very easily to apple pay and google pay without you really doing anything so that's a, like a headache off your mind that makes life much easier um, for the record for me, this is always the most challenging bit at the end when you're hooking up your payment mechanisms. So make sure you set aside some time to do it when you can focus and also that you can that you remember to test it. Uh, and a word of warning, make sure you when you test it, when you're happy with it, you remember to turn the testing box off, uncheck the testing, bo testing box, because otherwise people aren't going to be able to buy from your store. Um, and I know of people that that's happened to. So can you do it yourself? You absolutely can do this yourself. Um, if you have a WordPress website or probably a Wix website or a Squarespace website or even a Weebly website that you update and you feel confident and comfortable with it, yes, you definitely can. Um, if you have a web company that can help you out, that's fantastic. Um, perhaps they, you pay them for your hosting or something like that. So they'll be able to give you support with things like putting in navigation if you need it or, um, setting up the domain so uh, if you have a web company that's great and I would just check in with them first so that they are going to give you support to do it um, and also if you won't panic if anything doesn't go right there is one thing that I uh, have worked since it with websites since 2002 there is one thing that I know and that is no matter how prepared you are no matter how much you've done everything and you think wow I am amazing sometimes something comes at you and you're just like oh my god what has happened here and that is it's quite possible that that is going to happen to you with a with the website uh, and it can be quite with it with adding a shop to your website and it can be tricky to unpick so the key thing is that if, if you're someone that's going to go into complete panic and that's going to really 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 stress you out then maybe building it yourself isn't for you um i also would advise against it if you're one of those people that hands everything over to a team member in terms of tech and it scares you a little bit it's not for you then to build it yourself um, and also, if you want a more complicated setup, so one of the um, one of the examples that I showed you before, they actually use um, SagePay, and in order to use SagePay, you have to have some different plugins, which cost more money, and have some different work a uh, different workflow. So if you want to do something like that, then I'd advise you to get a pro in. If you want to have it set up so that um, your inventory is automatically updated. Um, then that's going to need a little bit of extra development work and therefore I would um, get a pro in. Um, and also if you're a serial procrastinator, there are enough phases of setting up a shop that it can take weeks and weeks and weeks. It doesn't need to, as I said, I genuinely believe you could have one set up by the end of the day tomorrow. But if you are a procrastinator, it's probably not the best project for you. I think your time could be used more wisely. OK, so now I've told you everything about should you do it um, and the things that you should prepare in advance. The next few slides are just me showing you some stages of, of Shopify so you can get a feel for actually what does it look like? Could I do it myself? Um, so let's move on.
Okay, so on the subject of themes and designs and things like that, uh, Shopify have got lots of free ones. They've also got paid for ones. Are the paid for ones better than the free ones? Maybe, but uh, a lot of that is about personal taste. And I tend to think about, um, is this worth the investment? And actually, is a professional design going to generate you more revenue, um, revenue than one of their free ones that can also look quite professional? Not really. So um, and unless you really hate the themes that you see in the free free option, I would opt, I would opt for one of those. Um, or if you're going to be integrating it into your website anyway, it almost becomes irrelevant because you're going to use a buy button instead. OK. OK, so obviously that was just a really quick demo to give you a bit of a feel for uploading products. Um, we can chat about it in more detail if, if you've got questions around it afterwards with Eve. Um, so the next stage is up, updating the layout. So I've worked with quite a lot of CMSs down the years, um, and I actually think that this is it's super intuitive. Um, it's really easy to write your headers and your, your text and add your images. Um, when you create collections, they're automatically pulled through. Uh, one thing I would say, if you decide to use Shopify, working with collections can be the trickiest bit. And I, I'd suggest that you always do them manually because um, I've noticed that whenever I have clients who set them up, um, so that they are um, automated, there tends to be headaches and issues. So um, 
it, it might take you a, an extra few minutes to, to add products to it, but it's just safer. So um, the next screen is about marketing it. So once you've built your shop, you're going to want to put it on, um, you're probably gonna to want to put it on Facebook. You might want to, you're obviously gonna to want to integrate it with your website. So I'm just gonna show you how simple that is to do. Uh, in terms of those sales channels, one of them that they offer you is a buy button, um, and the buy button is great if you want to integrate it with the rest of your um, uh, the rest of your website. So earlier on, we spoke about perhaps you might be doing demos at this time. So if you do a demo and then you want to put just put the buy button at the bottom of that blog post, um, so that people can automatically buy the product, that's a really great way to do it, uh, and it's not complicated either. Okay, so the settings you're bound to forget. I just want to mention this because if you are building it yourself, then um, I know you'll put loads of effort into making sure that it looks great. And I know that you'll um, check that it reads well and I know you'll do all those sorts of things. But then these are the little details that you might forget. Uh, the first one of those is the checkout, bus, uh, the checkout process. And what I mean by that is checking that every stage of that looks right and that it's also using the same color schemes as everything else and those sorts of things because they automatically set it up with um, the kind of, you know, the, the, the website link like light blue color. So it's quite easy to find that suddenly your checkout process doesn't look like the rest of the site. So make sure you pay attention to that. Um, the notifications. Um, so all of the settings, all, all of the platforms that you might choose to use automatically send out notifications both to you to let you know that you've got a purchase um, and also to um, the person that's made the purchase. Now, those come out of the box, but they can be customised. So um, make sure that you do that. Make sure that you put your logo on them. Make sure that they sound like you, because personally speaking, I'm, I'm not a fan of getting that message that says, we've got your order. Just Give some personality, make sure that it really feels like your brand. Um, abandoned cart emails, they're something that you're actually gonna have to tick the box, box to make happen. This is a great idea if you do. Um, the stats on, um, on the, the impact of uh, abandoned cart emails is about 30% pickup. So actually it's really, really worthwhile doing so. Um, and on that, in order to do abandoned cart emails, it's really important that you encourage people to set up an account rather than uh, letting them just check out as a guest. Um, I personally am not a fan of making it compulsory to make people register, but I do think it's important that you make it an option. Uh, the reason I mentioned stock management is because um, once you're back up and running and you're selling things in, in your salons and in your clinics, um, but then you've also got them online, then you do need to make sure you stay on top of that and make sure um, that you, you stay on top of your numbers because it's really annoying if you go to buy something or if you pay for something and then you're told, oh yeah, actually we haven't got any of those. So you do need to have make sure that you have a process in place to make sure that that's happening. Um, and then uh, the last one is order fulfillment. Um, and that's just making sure that you check all the processes. So there's a process once you make an order where you mark it as completed. And just make sure that you've been through that and you know how to do it so that everything's going to tally up because you regret it otherwise. Um, now, the next slide's gone missing. I'm just looking at my notes here. My next slide is supposed to be about marketing, but it's not. So I'm just going to talk you through marketing your store without the slide. Um, the key thing about marketing your store is that you need to do it on every channel that you have available. Um, and that means your email marketing, SMS, uh, it means your social media, and potentially it means social media advertising. What I would do before you do that is I'd, I'd think about 
do you want to just tell people that you've got a store through social media advertising and if so do you think that's going to work so I would more look at perhaps telling people you've got a store by, by doing your Valentine's Day campaign or something like that with to, with, a, with some bundles and, and, and promoting your store that way if you decide you want to use social media ads. Um, it's really important that when you're marketing the store that you don't just tell people about it once. Uh, I think sometimes we forget that there's a rule of seven that says it takes seven points of contact for someone to um, actually make a purchase. So um, reminding people is really important even at this time. But what I would say is don't just send out a message that says, we've got a shop, we've got a shop, we've got a shop. Make sure that you are integrating that with educational content and in, in interesting content. And that's where like the buy now button really comes into its own so that you can actually kind of to sell your talents and then tell people how they can, what they can use to, to create that, recreate that. Um, I am a big fan of promotions, but before you do a promotion, you always need to make sure um, that it's still going to be making you money. Uh, the good thing about an online store is obviously you're taking out your staff commissions, um, but taking 20% off across the board or something like that, don't do that for a long period of time. If you're going to do a, an, op a launch, an opening um, offer when your, salon, when your store first goes live, then make sure that you've got a short, sorry about this, the sun has just gone, um, make sure that you've just got a short term offer on anything that's too good to be true because otherwise you will regret it um, and actually I think that kind of covers us if hopefully you've got some questions which I'm more than happy to answer with Eve um, just in terms of what next uh, I've mentioned a few times that I've got a freebie that you can download in that freebie it's just kind of got the, the five steps so how to choose your platform um, telling you all the things that you'll need uh, and when you do if you do download that then what you will also get is I'll send you an email and that email's got in it the Shopify and the WooCommerce spreadsheets um, that you can use to upload to the store um, there is a um, uh, how to build a, a course uh, how to build a store course if you are someone that wants to be taken through it step by step um, and we'll get your, your shop set up in a week that way um, if you prefer to do it with a little bit of hand holding and you can go to salondeputy.co.uk for that. Um, or alternatively, just give me a follow on Instagram and we can become virtual friends. And I, I share information about building websites and building shops quite a lot. So um, that's another source for you. Right, I'm gonna hit the stop share button now and bring Eve back in and hopefully we've got some questions. Ah. Thanks so much, Kate. That was great. We've had lots of comments as you've gone along saying it's really useful. And I think particularly the demos and seeing how it works has been, been really helpful. So thank you. Um, there have been a few questions pop up as we go along. If anyone else has got any questions, do type them in now in Zoom or over on Facebook. Um, but yeah, we've had a few already. So um, firstly, somebody's asking, I'm a sole trader um, service business for 12 years. Do I need to register with Companies House? I'm not VAT registered and my accountant does my books. I know you mentioned Companies House there at the beginning. No, no, you don't need to. Um, but what you've got to be aware of is there is going to be some VAT issues in terms of products, aren't there? Because you're not VAT registered. You're selling products that are VAT registered. You're not going to be able to claim the VAT back. So actually, is it going to be costing you money? Okay. So so, you, so, you, so that's one to chat to your accountant about. Mm. So yeah, I wanted to get advice on because it may be that it's not not worthwhile for you to do that if you're not that registered. Okay. Yeah. Um, another question that's just popped through, approximately how much would it cost to have a shop built, please? So I suppose if you're looking to outsource this. Okay, so um, Encore Digital, I do them for £500, um, which I think is about average. You can pay an awful lot more um, it may be that you can pay them less. As I said, I tend to do it on um, WooCommerce or Shopify, depending on, on what your, your site is. Um, if, someone, if someone's quoting you significantly over a thousand pounds, then I think that you should probably tell them where to go. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, another question we've had through is um, there's someone here in Zoom saying, I have Yell as my host. Have you got any experience of their setup? Um, alternatively, alternatively, I was thinking of using Sum Up, which looks easier. Do you have any thoughts on those? I'm really sorry, but I don't know <laughs> anything about either of those things. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I'm really sorry. I don't. Um, 
But uh, what I do know, actually, from working with clients at the client before that I had a Yale set up is that they do have quite good support. Um, so, so actually, they should be able to talk you through it, really. Excellent. So, yeah, contact them for a bit more info. Um, another, sorry, things are popping up as I'm going along, so just having a look here. So, someone has just asked, the price always has the postage added in the total, but some suppliers add tax on the postage. Which way is best? So I would always have the delivery as a separate option at the, at the end and make it clear that the delivery is going to be at the end. And also something that I didn't mention during the thing is you can set different delivery rates for different things. I'm really sorry, my, I'm just going to see if I can, so that I can see you. <laughs> Bear with me for one second. It's nice to have some sunshine. <laughs> but I'm going to shut out. better <laughs> you can see the world i can see so um yeah sorry i've just gone off on a tangent but just to stress that that you can set di different delivery rates for different regions or different um price points or whatever so that's something that's important to do now can you remind me what the question was <laughs> <laughs> which one we're it's about uh yeah do you add tax um in, when you're advertising the prices, do you put the tax in there or do you add it later when the when the price is checking? Yeah, so I would always have the product price and then I would have my shipping at the end. Okay. I think people have become used to that and I think I think that it's much more transparent and I think people want it, it helps build trust and that's important. Yeah, I want to know it all up front. That makes sense. Um, someone else has just commented, I'm a bit nervous of creating an animal I can't control with my home built Wix website. Is Shopify easy enough to signpost without WordPress? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I really like Shopify in terms of it, it's it's step by step. And at the end, so there's a settings button at the bottom. Um, and before you go live, just go into that settings button and go one, two, three, four, five. I think there's nine things in it. There might be 12. And just go through those and you, you know you're going to be safe but it also when you first sign up it says right do this do this do this okay. um, so I I don't find it I don't think it's scary um uh, <laughs> play the <laughs> thing I didn't mention is that um both the Shopify and Shopwired give you a 14-day free trial so you've oh. got two weeks to go yeah now nah, I don't like this or it's it's there's nothing to lose so yeah you can play around a bit and see how it works for you without committing and, and also you're not tied in anyway so actually the investment of shopify is or is 29 dollars the investment of shopwired which was is 29 pounds um then there are the costs of um that, that are taken off the individual purchase but this isn't mega money so mm -hmm. actually if you do it for three months and go now nah, this isn't working for me then actually it's 150 pounds it's not that's not in fact it's less than that but do you know what I mean a worst case scenario so so it's not something that you need to be very worried about and another question is, is do all platforms have a merchant fee for each transaction I believe Shopify does is the question okay well well it, well it's not actually the platform that has the merchant fee it's the the payment mechanism so um um, Stripe and PayPal, they were on a screen earlier on, which we can go back to if you need it, then they do. Um, Shopify, where that is a bit different is that they have Shopify Pay um, and Shopify Pay charges 2.2% plus 20p, which if you're looking at that on small amounts, doesn't seem, on a big amount, that doesn't seem very much, but actually on smaller amounts, suddenly you're a bit like, hmm, 20p as well as that, suddenly, mm -hmm. That, that does add up so it is it's a figure that you need to factor in but that's as you say to do with the payment mechanism so you might have an external payment mechanism or you, oh, you might have shopify so it's kind yeah. of depending yeah so look into those and um, someone else has commented the postage levels are difficult to decide um i.e if they buy one product it's cheaper to send than if they buy three products so how can you level that i suppose you have any advice on setting your postage rates um I, I think I said uh, um, said that I tend to go for most of my clients be three ninety five or four ninety five, and that's a flat rate just because it's easier. Um, uh, it's one of those things that sometimes you're going to win on and sometimes you're going to lose on, 
and it's it's a case of working out what that looks like to you that's one of the reasons why i think I, it's definitely worth just going onto the post office website and just going or the real mail website and going okay exactly what is this going to cost me um and it might be that, uh, that you're able to, the, that if you start to sell regularly, you're able to come up with a relationship with them where you have different rates. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely worth doing your research on Royal Mail, but I think a flat rate is easier, but know that sometimes you're going to win and sometimes you're going to lose. Wow, thanks. And someone's just commented, actually, we set up with Shopify last lockdown and it's super simple. We use shortcut software and they showed us how to import our product inventory. So it's just an interesting point, I suppose, to talk to your software provider if you have um, mm -hmm. if you have one and you might be able to link it up that way. Um, a couple of people have asked about if they've already got a, an online shop set up, um, but it's not connected to their website. Do how do they kind of connect the two? So do they contact their website hosts? Um, and how important is it to have it through your website? I definitely would connect it. Um, I think there's two things that I would suggest to do. Number one is just put it in your navigation. And actually, if we get off this phone, if, you, if you've got a content managed website, then by 11 o'clock, you should be able to have that done. It's, it's just as simple as going into a navigation and adding a link. So, um, so that's the, the first thing that I would suggest. Um, for me personally, I prefer stores that are integrated to the website. Um, and if you have a WordPress site, I know I've banged on about that, but that's because it's just what I'm most comfortable working in. Then there are plugins to integrate stores um, other than WooCommerce ones, so you could do it that way. Um, or alternatively, we spoke a few times about the Shopify Buy Now button. So actually you can just, if you've got a Shopify store, you can just use your Buy Now button and add that onto pages where it feels right to have it. So you don't have to do it across the board. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, one other question is in WooCommerce, do you have any tips on writing the slugs and snippets to help the SEO? Yeah, <laughs> actually, do you know what? Um, yes, I do. But I think we could go on forever and ever and ever. So, um, so I'm going to keep it relatively brief. So your, um, your slug, make sure it's intuitive. It, the, a Ron Seal slug, or what, what it says on the, the tin slug. Um, uh, and make sure you use hyphens rather than underscores. Um, next one, the page description, uh, the page title. Your page title is the bit is the most important bit on the page. So make sure you use the product name and that you also, if you can, use a brief description of the type of product that it is. Um, and in terms of the page description, your page description is the bit that appears on the Google search results page. Um, that is around about 155 characters, it tends to be. Um, I quite like to try and include a call to action in those so that people can see a reason why they should look at this product. Or So, so make sure that you, you give people a reason why they need this. Excellent. Thank you. There's SEO in a, in a nutshell there. I love it. Um, another question here. What are the pros and cons between setting up a Facebook shop and an online shop attached to your website, please? So I think yeah, a few people have got an online shop via Facebook. Um, what are the pros and cons? Do you know what? The pro, it doesn't matter. Set up a shop somewhere that you are going to be able to update it frequently, that you're going to be able to promote it. Um, and it, it doesn't matter where it is. Just make sure that you tell people through your marketing channels where it is. Um, if you use something like Shopify, if you use WooCommerce, then actually you can um, very easily connect it to Facebook. So you also get a Facebook store. Um, but, but the key thing is just to keep it simple, what works for you? Um, people quite often freak out about, oh, I'm using the wrong software or whatever. No, you're not. It doesn't matter. Just be consistent and, uh, and have an offering that works for both you and for your clients. Mm. And I guess obviously you can cross promote between the two anyway. Yeah, exactly. Fabulous. And um, another question that's just come up is the products I want to retail need a consultation form filled in. Um, does Shopify allow you to add a form to complete prior to allowing the ordering? And this is a really good one, I think, particularly for things like skin. Mm. Do you know what? Um, I'm not sure if my email address was on it, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll get Eve to share my email address. And if you can drop me an email, I'll come back to you on that one because I don't honestly know, but I, I will. We'll check it and answer you. 
Fab, thank you. And um, yeah, obviously this, as a lot of people are asking, will we be able to watch this webinar back or refer back to it? And I did pop a, a comment in the um, in the chat here in Zoom, but if you want to refer back to it, it'll be on our Facebook pages for the all the channels. Um, all the channels <laughs> that we're streaming to at the moment so hj professional beauty aesthetic medicine modern barber and pbhj ireland so yeah pop, you can uh, watch it back on facebook there um so i think i don't want to <laughs> keep you any longer okay i know we've, we've had a couple of more questions probably through, but um if anyone has any more questions for kate do um, comment over on facebook and you know obviously as you can see Kate's details that she shared on the last slide and um, so contact her directly there. But yeah, thank you, Kate. It's been so useful. I think so many people are interested in this topic at the moment. So thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> Bye. Take and, care. Yeah, we'll have more sessions from Kate coming up the next two Mondays at 10 a.m. So yeah, come back for more. <laughs> and we'll see you all soon. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank see you. Soon. Bye.